Next I'd like to add the ability to have multiple levels in the game, but before I do that I want to finish off this layout so that it looks how I want it to before I start making copies of it. So on the right you may have noticed that next to project there's also a layers tab. I'm going to lock this layer and I'm going to add a new one and that layer is layer one. I'm going to move that below layer zero. I'm going to rename it and I'm going to make this my background layer. Uh, you'll notice that since this is locked, I can't actually select any of these objects. They're locked in place on layer 0. So in my background layer, I'm going to double click and I'm going to create a tiled background object. Then I'm going to load my background image that I've created. And I'm going to take this image and I'm going to resize it to the size of my screen, which is 720 by 480. Rename my object to background. And you'll notice that it's not visible. So I'm going to go back to layer zero and I'm going to change my transparent value to yes so that I can see through that layer and see the layer underneath it. I'm going to lock my background so that I don't accidentally move it on layer zero which I'm actually going to rename to my game layer. You could also take all of your user interface elements such as your score, your lives, and your draw lives and you could cut those, make a new layer, called GUI for graphical user interface and paste those objects on your GUI layer. Might need to reset up where those were and lock the GUI layer so that everything is now just on the game layer and not any of these other things. I'm also going to take my walls and I'm going to move them to the edge of the level. Expand them if I need to. And I'm also going to set their initial visibility to invisible, just in case so that I don't actually see them. So these objects are just for the ball's interaction. They don't actually do anything in the game itself. Check this by running it. Now I don't see the walls or my lose wall, but we'll see that the game still operates correctly. Make sure I can still bounce off the side. Notice it kind of floats on the wall if it gets right on the edge. So I'm going to take each of my walls and put them a couple pixels over. And if I hadn't made them invisible, we'll see that they we would see that they overlapped a little bit. I'll test that. Now it seems to bounce off the wall just fine. Bounce off the other side wall. And I will temporarily remove some of my bricks to make sure the ball is going to bounce off of the top wall just fine as well. And it does. If you don't want the ball to go to where the score and the lives are, you could even have this wall cover up those so that it bounces before it gets there. It's totally up to you as to how you want your game to behave. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and fill my level back out and set everything back up. And once I have everything kind of how I want it, I'm going to take by layout and I'm going to create a duplicate. And that's going to be layout two. So layout two is going to be an exact copy of my first layout. So it has the same paddle, the same ball, the same bricks, the score, the lives, the draw lives, the wall and the lose wall and the background are all going to be exactly the same as they were in the first one. So it's important to get everything set up perfectly before you start making duplicates. By doing it this way, I can now just modify my bricks and lay them out in a new pattern for a new level without having to worry about setting up all those other minor details. Of course, the game won't actually do anything until I program it to do that, so I'm going to go back to my event sheet and add in that code now. So I'm going to want to go to the next level when I run out of bricks. Now I could go to brick and check to see if the object is on the screen, but I'm actually going to go to system and I'm going to do compared to values and the value that I'm going to check is the bricks dot count which is the number of brick objects that exist and you would think let's just do when that's equal to zero but just in case something gets weird and messes up I like to do inequalities in case somehow the brick count goes to negative one that shouldn't happen but just in case there's a bug in the software it's always best to try with inequalities because you never know when something might happen that you don't get the exact number you want. So I'm going to go when the brick count is less than or equal to zero. That's going to be my trigger for going to the next level. So to do that, I go to action and under system, there is go to next slash previous layout. And I'm going to go to next. So when I run out of bricks, I go to the next level. 
which means at some point I need to be able to go back to the first one. So that is a system compare variable. Let's go back to our inequality, less than or equal to zero. And whenever that happens, I want to system, go to layout, layout one. So I want to go back to the first level. Now, when I go back to the first level, some things need to change. I need to, well, actually, let's test it to see what happens. So let's go ahead and lose all my lives real quick to see what happens. Three, one, now I have zero. What happens? Mm, it's frozen. What actually happens now is I have zero lives to so every frame. It's like, oh, you have zero lives. Let's uh, start layout one over. And then let's start layout one over. Now let's start layout one over. So it's constantly starting this level over and over again about 60 times every second. So what I need to do is I need to reset my lives. So system, I need to set my value lives back to the number I want it to be. So let's do five. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and set our score back to zero so that we don't get points from our previous game carried over to this new game. If you've played around with this enough, you might notice that every now and then the ball might go exactly straight side to side when it clears the last brick on a row and get stuck bouncing between your left wall and your right wall. So to fix that, there's uh, two events I came up with. So add event system, and I want to do is between values. So the value I want to check is the angle the ball is moving at. So that's ball dot bullet, because we're talking about the bullet movement angle of motion. If the ball dot bullet's angle of motion is about zero degrees, so it's moving straight left and right, or 180 degrees, so it's moving straight to the left. Now zero degrees could be either 359.9 or 0 0.1. That's harder to test for than straight to the left, which is 180. So I'm going to do 179.5 and 180.5. So if it's really close to moving 180 degrees, I want it to trigger that. Now, why I don't just test if it's equal to 180 is it might be like 180.001. So it's actually moving up, but it's so slow that it's going to take you five minutes for the ball to make it to another thing like a brick to bounce off of. And that's no fun. So anytime it's close to that, I'm just going to set it off by one angle. So let's go to the ball, set angle of motion, and let's make that 179 degrees so that it's going to be moving just short of straight left. It's going to be left and slightly up. I'm going to go ahead and click on this far left part, copy and paste that. And I'm going to do the same thing for if it's straight up and down, which is 90 degrees. So I have 89.5 and 90.5. And I'm going to set the ball's angle of motion to 91 degrees. If we were to test that, I can take the ball, set its angle to zero degrees. So it'll go straight right, bounce off the wall. And then when it comes back, it'll be 180 degrees. And then it's going to go slightly at an angle and make it to where it actually does not get stuck going sideways and eventually makes it either to the panel or back up to the bricks. The only thing left for me to do now is to make some more levels. So now I've made up six levels, so I have a, an easy one and then it gets progressively harder throughout the different stages. Uh, one other thing that I can say is that if you go to the ball and you go to your behaviors and you actually remove the bound to layout uh, behavior. You can move your walls to where they're right on the edge. And since the bound to layout will not stop it from going out, it'll actually bounce off the very edge of your layout where your walls are. And you should now have a fully functional paddle ball game.